The Economic Work Conference of the CCP Central Committee was held in Beijing from December 8th to 10th, and is China's highest level annual meeting to analyze the economic situation and make decisions. The meeting mentioned that economic development is facing the triple pressure of shrinking demand, supply shocks, and weakening expectations, and pointed out that next year's economic work should be focused on stability and seek progress in stability. This shows that the Xi Jinping administration recognizes the downward pressure on the economy and is worried about the economic situation in 2022. Usually, Zhongnan High policymakers will set next year's economic growth target at the Economic Work Conference and then announce it publicly at the National People's Congress meeting in March of the following year. According to some experts, China may set its economic growth target between 5 to 6 percent next year. With five percent being the bottom line, China's economy started the year on a high note, from a huge 18.3 percent year-on-year jump in the first quarter to a mere 4.9 percent growth in the third quarter. Economists generally estimate that the growth will slow down again in the fourth quarter, and could even fall below four percent. The magnitude of the slowdown has raised doubts on the hard landing. As a result, the most prominent key word at the conference was stability. Which was mentioned 25 times, compared to 13 times in 2020. Just a few days ago, China's esteemed economist Li Daokui attended the 14th Golden Kiden Forum. He pointed out that the global and Chinese economies are facing three major risks of recession: debt, industrial chain, and decarbonization, and that the next few years will be China's most difficult economic period in the last 40 years of reform and opening up. The lack of domestic demand is the main factor disturbing the economy. As a result, China should prepare for a hard time. According to public information, Li Daokui is one of the most respected economists in China, and is also highly regarded by the Chinese Communist Party. It is very unusual for him to say in person that China is going to have a hard time. Just last year, the chairman of Fuyao Glass, Cao Di Wang, also said that China was going to have a hard time. But he was quickly silenced. According to Taiwan's Xie Jinhe, the fact that an official Chinese economist is talking about China's economic problems and that it was published by the Hong Kong government's economic journal demonstrates that Beijing's intention to give the public an early warning that hard times are coming and it is very important to get prepared for the difficulties ahead. Li Daokui's three core points are local debt, industrial chain shift. An economic recession due to carbon reduction. In addition, there are the triple pressure of shrinking demand, supply shock, and weakening expectations, according to the Central Economic Work Conference. In fact, there are more problems in China's economy, such as the massive unemployment, the debt crisis of the real estate companies, and the fiscal crisis of local governments. Each of these problems could become a great rhino that causes huge impact on China's economic and social stability. This makes Xi Jinping's administration very worried. On the issue of local debts, Li Daokui said that China's local debts are as high as 50 trillion RMB, which is 10 times more than the debts of real estate enterprises. It is the local debts that are the core problem. In the past decade or so, China's local governments have been focusing on one thing: building infrastructure. This resulted in a heavy burden on local governments, with debts accounting for more than 50 percent of GDP. He stressed that the existing local bonds must be transferred to the central government, and local bonds should be converted to national bonds. Not only will interest rate be reduced, but RMB can also be internationalized with the national credit guarantee. About the transfer of the industrial chain, we have talked about it in detail in our previous video. Not only are Samsung and Panasonic moving out of China, but also Foxconn, which is part of Apple's supply chain, is actively building factories offshore. On the issue of economic recession caused by carbon emission reduction, Li Daokui believes that Europe and the United States are accelerating carbon neutrality and net zero emissions, while China's measures are too aggressive, which may cause even more harm. The impact of this issue on China's economy can also be seen from recent news. In late November, a notice was spread on the internet. It says, in order to ensure the 2022 Winter Olympic Games, which will be held in Beijing starting February 4th, 
the central government decided to shut down heavy industry enterprises in northern China, northern Huabei, and western China by January 1st. Hebei, Shandong, Shanxi, and Henan are the core areas to be regulated in priority. The shutdown period is from January 1st to March 8th of 2022. Despite the related content being deleted from official websites, there is still information leaked out to the public. On December 6, there was news that more than 20 steel enterprises in 13 provinces and cities had released their production suspension plans, which were extended up to March 2022, just before the end of the Winter Olympics. Many provinces have issued a notice urging heavy industry enterprises to stop production in turn. It seems that this is still happening, but just not in the name of protecting the Winter Olympic Games, and the scope may not be as wide as it was once rumored to be in the beginning. But even so, such a large-scale shutdown for more than two months is not only creating huge seasonal unemployment, but will interfere with the supply chain and is pushing up the price of industrial raw materials. The impact on employment and the economy will certainly not be small. Next, let's look at the unemployment problem sweeping China. The first is the wave of layoffs triggered by the downturn in the real estate sector. Since the beginning of this year, real estate companies have been experiencing a series of debt crises. There is one real estate company going bankrupt almost every day. Many of them, such as Evergrande, Fantasia, and Sony Holdings, have reported layoffs one after another. In addition, many real estate agents have lost their jobs due to the authorities' crackdown on the secondary housing market. In the first nine months of this year, 642 agency stores in Shenzhen have closed down. Not only that, the downturn of the real estate industry has also caused upstream and downstream industries to close down or lay off employees. Secondly, foreign companies are withdrawing from China. In September, Samsung Heavy Industries, China's first foreign-owned shipbuilder, withdrew its investment from the Ningbo shipyard in Zhejiang province. In April, Panasonic announced that it would close its dry cell factory in Shanghai next year. In the same month, American retailer Walmart closed six of its stores in China, and in four years, Walmart has closed 80 stores in total in China. In addition, Carrefour has closed many of its stores this year due to poor business conditions. In the first two months of this year alone, Carrefour has closed 14 stores. Thirdly, small and medium-sized enterprises are in difficult situations. Some even went bankrupt due to the increased price of raw materials and the rationing of power supply, resulting in a large number of unemployment. Fourthly, the double reduction policy hit the education and training industry hard. Chinese education and training industry as a whole faced the crisis of layoffs, transformation, and bankruptcy. 700,000 education and training institutions and tens of millions of practitioners are affected. Lastly, the consolidation of multinational e-commerce companies, such as Amazon's closure of a large number of stores to Chinese sellers, has resulted in losses to sellers and a large number of unemployed workers. In addition, since 2021, China's large internet companies have suffered an unprecedented anti-monopoly crackdown, with Alibaba, Tencent, Baidu, Jingdong, and other large internet companies suffering huge losses. This was followed by massive layoffs. In September, TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, laid off 70% of its employees, meaning that nearly 70,000 people may be facing unemployment. The video platform iQiyi is laying off 20-40% to of its employees, about 3,000 people. The video sharing platform Kuaishou has also been reported by employees on social media to have recently laid off up to 30% of its employees. Sina Reading has laid off 90% of its employees, and Shanghai's Trip.com headquarters has laid off 30%. These are only a few examples. China's internet industry employs about 20 million people, and a 20% layoff means an additional 4 million people are unemployed. With such massive unemployment, not everyone can switch to other industries, although some of them can be diverted to mobile employment such as takeaway and online ride-sharing. For example, most white-collar workers in big cities are struggling to break even due to the high living expenses and high housing prices, and unemployment will cause disruptive changes to their lives. Therefore, an increase in unemployment in big cities has particularly serious political and social consequences. 
This can easily cause a domino effect, such as a chain reaction of cutting off mortgage payments to the bank. Finally, there is another problem, the local financial crisis. The huge debt has already caused the local government to suffocate. Now as more and more housing enterprises go default, not only are land unable to be auctioned off, but the central government is also asking the local government to resolve these problems. For example, after Evergrande defaulted on its debts, a working group was sent by the Guangdong provincial government to coordinate the problem resolution. This is undoubtedly an added burden to local governments, which rely heavily on land for their finances. According to the official data released by China's financial column Gloomway in August this year, of China's 31 provinces and cities, only Shanghai was in fiscal surplus in the first half of this year. The remaining 30 provinces and cities all had greater expenses than revenue. The pressure is greatest in Henan, Sichuan, Yunnan, and a few other provinces, with gaps between income and expenditure being more than 250 billion RMB. Recently, rumor has it that the salary of civil servants in many provinces in China are quietly being reduced, up to 20 to 30 percent, and the impact is quite extensive. In early December, a Zhejiang-based netizen who identified as a female civil servant disclosed on Weibo that the Hangzhou Finance Department had previously announced a cut in civil service performance benefits without announcing the specific reasons, and that her salary had suddenly been reduced by 25%, or about 50,000 RMB. A Weibo-certified media outlet said it understood that the general reduction was 15%, with civil servants under the age of 35 being hit the hardest. This situation is not only limited to Zhejiang. It is said that Shanghai police station chief had annual salaries reduced from 350,000 to 200,000 RMB. The annual salary of section officers from 240,000 down to 150,000 RMB. Another denizen revealed that Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Guangdong, Fujian, and Shanghai may also feel the impact of this wave of pay cuts. In July of this year, there were a number of places where civil servants reported that performance bonuses were withheld, and some were asked to return the performance bonuses that were already paid. The news of civil service pay cuts is becoming more and more prevalent, and from a regional perspective, is occurring in most places across China. The basic salary of civil servants is guaranteed by the central government, and the performance bonus, which comes from local finance, determines their overall income. This is exactly the part being cut. Now that the economically developed provinces are in trouble, it means that local finances are also on the decline. Under the extreme pressure to earn a living brought about by the pay cut, civil servants are complaining a lot. There was a civil servant that got reported and punished for ride-hailing on the weekend. Some people asked whether it was a violation for civil servants to deliver takeaways on the weekends. The official response was that it does not warrant disciplinary actions in principle. So even civil servants in the upper class of society are now complaining about their low incomes and have to deliver takeaways on the weekends. Then what about the ordinary citizen? They can only be even worse off. Ironically, Chinese official media People's Daily launched a series of reports on December 13th, titled, This year we are full of a sense of satisfaction, proposing the so-called listening to the people tell their own happiness stories. The first issue was titled, I have a job, my future is full of hope, trying to publicize the government's achievements in stabilizing and promoting employment. There are also examples of flexible employment in these reports. Lin Qiang, a 39-year-old in Shenyang, does online car hailing during the day and delivers takeaways from 5.30 to 9.30 in the evening. He also sells and installs sanitary wear when he has orders. He said that he can sign employment agreements for all three jobs. He expressed thanks to the government's good policy so he can get stable income from his jobs and they are protected by the law. He said, I am happy, I feel comfortable, and my life is full of hope. Netizens commented that scenarios of having three jobs, all with formal employment agreements and stable income, can only exist in the CCP's media propaganda. Is a life of working more than 10 hours a day really a happy life? What do you think? Let us know in the comments.